I'm here today on a cold, wet winter's day looking at a very typical um, wooden fence panel. Uh, as you can probably see, the, the posts are not completely straight. The gaps between posts are not always the same and uh, you quite often get this kind of effect from it. We think that you're probably going to be better using recycled plastic for your fencing. For one thing, you won't be cutting down wood, which helps to deal with some of the global warming problem we've got uh, by absorbing carbon dioxide. But recycled plastic will not rot. You'll never need to treat it. It'll last probably at least five times as long as any kind of treated wood product. We'd like to show you how to put one of these together because the thing about recycled plastic is it's about twice the weight and density of wood, the, the mixed plastic lumber that we use for making fences. Uh, so once you've made your fence panel you can't just kind of lift it up and drop it in like you can with wood because it's too heavy which is an advantage of course because it's not going to blow out very easily and we've brought in a aerospace engineer who happened to be building a, re a recycled plastic fence with lumber from Kedal Limited uh, and he used to work in the aerospace engineering quality control so he's very good at producing a very high quality product. The materials that you use in this are for the rails in this it's going to be hit and miss fencing. The rails will be 100 by 35 and the fencing pails are round top fencing pails in recycled plastic that are 100 by 25. Bob Norburn as he's called he used uh, stainless steel screws uh, 50 millimeter in length number 12s um, because he felt that you need something like that for a fence that's going to last a long time you need screws that will last a long time and he lives near the sea so he gets a lot of salty air. Uh, you can also use um, uh, passivated plated screws they're often good enough for, for most applications but if you really want to go to the top product then you'll use stainless steel. All of these things by the way you can get from our website at uh, keydeltrades.co.uk uh, and the tools that you're going to need are just normal woodworking tools. Bob recommends a pillar drill uh, so that you get very straight holes. You have to pre-drill your pails, a bench saw, or a chop saw and a power cordless screwdriver. That's all you're going to need for the job. So let's go now to, to Bob and uh, see what he's, uh, how he's putting this fence together. Well, I'm here today uh, with Bob Norburn. Uh, my name's Lewis Walsh. I'm one of the directors of Keydell Limited and Bob Bob has been installing some of our recycled plastic fencing. He's been putting it together himself with these uh, round top fence pails. Um, and he's just going to talk us through what the stages of the game are here, of how you, you set about it from beginning to end. For the most part, the base panels are within usually half an inch or so. But these are all, it's, it's a bad run from the day they were put in. The difference in the height of the concrete base panel and the next one is about four inches. <laughs> and when, it, when it's set in concrete, it will be a hell of a job to start adjusting the height. Right. So what you do to maintain the height of your fence, a consistent height all along, you've got to make your pails four inches longer to uh, compensate for the drop from one concrete base panel to the other one. Right. And that gives you a level fence at the top then? Doesn't that it? maintains a consistent level all the way, you know, there's probably about 200 feet of fence here. So uh, you don't want one panel looking, you well, know, like a, like, a, that, yeah. like a row of false teeth like, you know, so. Right. So if you can, if you can adjust the, the height of these to make them all level. That's, they, that's, that's the first thing. And if you can't, thing. if you can't, then you deal with the, the length of your fence yeah. panels to, to do that. Okay. That's, that's the first part of the uh, job. Uh, you, you told me it was easy to saw, so like, <laughs> let's see you do it. Well, it's as easy to saw as any timber, you know, there's uh, various grades of timber, but there's no problem sawing it at all with just a regular bent saw or whatever you've got. Okay. As simple as that. So once you've stage, got yeah. it cut to length, the right. thing then is to get a hole pattern. So what we did is uh, make little jigs like this. It's just a matter of placing it at the bottom of the pail and then just doing a pre-drill 
as we've got here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just pre-drilling it, just to mark the position of the hole. And then when it comes to the centre bit, we have this little bit that is on the well, bottom. this is another check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got to get the central holes exactly right. When it comes to the top, there's a little bit of good luck there that there's a line on every one of these. So then you just put that against the line that's on every pillar. Mark a couple of holes in it and it follows it. The positions then are always consistent. And on top of that, uh, it's, it's real easy to work with light. So that's the first thing we do once we've got the pillars to the length we want. We do a pre-drill, a position so that when we put them on a bench drill, we've got the right old pattern. Uh, the beauty of doing these with a, uh, a bench drill is you get the whole square rather than start running off at a, an angle and you know it messes the screw up. But also uh, when you come to do the countersink, you can set the drill to a, an established depth so that every one of your countersinks are the same depth. Engineer there. Eh? Well, once we've uh, drilled the clearance holes for the shank on the screw uh, and then done the countersink so that you know you get that compression fit, uh, we'll load up all six holes on the pail so that when you put it against the cross pieces you don't have to start bending down and looking where the screws are, you know, you'd need more hands than an octopus. You would do maybe 20 panels like that, 20 pails, yeah. and then just have them on standby, just leaning up against a wall or whatever, and just pick them up and take them across to your cross members and start screwing them in. Right, and your posts were already in, which is quite common, isn't it? A lot of people will be replacing you know, uh, fencing like well, this, panels replaced, that's, uh, that was wood before. I replaced about four or five of them. Oh, right. And, uh, you know, it's better to do that than start looking at them a couple of years from now, seeing that the concrete's splitting. Right. Uh, and then having to try and get the panels out again, because once they're in, they're in for good. But there are ways around that that I've found. Uh, you can cut your cross pieces to a standard length, and then I have an end cap that I put on and I can have various thicknesses of end cap. So th this, this will be a, a typical cross piece, but the... Yeah, these are 35 mil, the pails are 25 mil. Right. So these are really substantial. But like I say, you know, there's uh, variations between the distance between the concrete posts. And it, if you just make your panel standard, you'll finish up with them. Although they're a brilliant panel, they'll be wagging about like loose teeth. So what did you do? So what I did was the offcuts that I get from sawing the pails to length and whatever, I put this little hole pattern in so that I can just put them on the end of the cross piece and I can have various thicknesses of these and just screw it in. And it gives you the extra little bit that you yeah, need yeah. to go in. So that it's absolutely the secure. Post, yeah. The fences, uh, Unlike some of the neighbour's fences, when there's a wind round here, nobody can sleep. You know, when we get 30, 40, 50 mile an hour winds off the ocean, uh, the fence panels are rattling away. Some of them, thankfully, fall down so they don't keep you awake all night, you know, the wooden <laughs> panels. But, again, the problem is not really with the panels, even though they're flimsy wooden fence panels. Uh, it's the distance between the concrete posts, and nobody's thought of making an adjustable cap on the end of it so that when they fit in, it's like a hand in a glove. Every one right. of them, every one finishes up being made to measure nice for the tight. distance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't want them too tight. You've got to allow so much for expansion during summertime where a six foot panel will expand, the cross pieces will expand about almost quarter of an inch. Right. So you don't want them absolutely snug. So you, you want, want about an eighth of an inch or so on each side yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to give it breathing space. That's yeah. what happens, yeah. yeah. The main thing is, don't think you can complete a panel and then just lift it in 
because I suppose you could do if you start getting cranes around and whatever like, you know, or maybe five of your buddies with six pairs of ladders or whatever. Yeah. Just as an example, lift it out for me. That is heavy. That is heavy. But the way to do it is to put the cross pieces in and I have jigs for those to separate them at two foot each. And I put the bottom cross piece in then I put this stepping piece in the gauge in and then I rest the next cross piece, the middle cross piece on top of that and then when that's in I have another gauge length and I put the top cross piece resting on there so initially when you're starting off you have three cross pieces separated by these gauges. Now this is basically so that one man can do the job if he's working on his own you don't need somebody there holding the things to get the right distance. You, you finish up, you know that they're going to be square, you know that every uh, panel will finish up looking the same. We normally do one side oh, and right. then uh, switch over to the other side and put them in from the other side. And then you start screwing one pail on the left hand side of the fence and one on the right hand side and as soon as you've done that you've got the exact distance between the cross pieces and you've got stability in the thing and you can start assembling it in situ. Make sure that these are following along at the right height. I made this little jig that slots over the top oh, and that gets you the right height. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, without that jig, if we move that jig away, and you're working on your own, show me how you would put it on. Uh, put it on the lip of that maybe. No, good luck to you as long as you've got a lip on the concrete there. All oh, right, sometimes the lip's not there. Correct, like so it's not jig, there on the other side. That jig takes a kind of... What you can do when you've, when you've rested the pail onto this jig, yeah. you put one screw in there, right? Yeah. And then when you've got that in, you take the jig out, you just move it along to the next one. Yeah. And then you've got one screw in, then you put your block in to make sure that you've got the distance right. And then when you've got that in, because you only put one screw in, you, it gives you some element to of... To swivel it to the yeah, correct position at the top. So yeah. that when you put that in, and you see I've got these two little blocks on either side, it's not just a piece. If you're working on your own, then this can't fall off. You can take it off when you put the screws in, it's not going to fall off while you're doing the job. Not only does it work that way, horizontally, but it works when we put these spaces. These hang it onto the cross piece when we're positioning the pail. Right. And also, to get it, that's why these come in again, not just resting on the cross piece, but on the back piece, so that we get a consistent spacing in between them. But there's a couple of ways we can check the height of it, you know, that we're getting it right, and that's pretty close. So that's one way of checking it. But there's also, we can line up by eye that the line that's there from manufacture of the pail is lined up. You realise we put them in on purpose? Ah, well, it is now, isn't it? It's Not been a problem. very nice to meet you. Not a problem. And I think we've done a brilliant explanation here. <laughs> Anybody should now be able to put up a recycled fence panel from scratch. So thanks very much. Uh, and uh, if you want to get hold of some of these, you just go to our website, uh, kdel.co.uk, uh, or you can send us an email uh, to sales at kdel.co.uk, uh, or you can give us a call on 01282 861 three, two, five. Thanks for watching.